G'day guys, Anthony Mitchell here from Finance Fitness Coaching. Some people call me Mitch. A bit of a detailed video today, you might have already seen the video going out on explaining my 11 reasons why you're not rich sort of ebook. Now, I want to go into a little bit more detail, so this will be a bit of a longer video. There was a short video explaining you know, how to download it and a little bit around, it, around those reasons, but I want to really go into a bit more depth today, so bear with me, this video could go for a little while. So, 11 reasons why you're not rich and what to do about it. And it's not your fault, okay? Number one on the reasons are that schools don't teach financial education. So, you know, I don't knocking school for scholastic and tertiary, and I think it's important that children and people learn uh, how to earn and, and become an engineers, doctors, lawyers, and stuff like that. But just because you earn a lot of money doesn't mean you have any financial education, okay? Schools don't teach it. It's important to understand that you need to keep learning after you leave school or university. And in actual fact, you never stop learning. So it's really important to understand that that's the rule number one. You, you know, you're not rich because you never learned how to understand financial education at school. Point number two, you left school thinking that you needed a job. So when I was at school, it was always, what are you going to do when you leave school? And, you know, are you, are you going to start a business? They never asked me that. So... I love being an entrepreneur, I love being an investor, I love doing what I do, but all throughout school, you're conditioned to what job are you going to have when you leave, you know, teachers that teach you that never left school are educating you, so you can understand while you don't really cross your mind to be an entrepreneur, I think it's fantastic and I think most people should consider it, but you left school thinking that you needed a job, and that's another reason why you're not rich, okay, because the biggest difference between an entrepreneur and an investor and someone who's a PAYG employee is that when an entrepreneur or an investor earns money, they then spend that money or on expenses, and, so, and a legitimate expense is other investments, and then they pay tax. When you're a PAYG employee, you earn your money, you get taxed before you see it, and then you invest or you have your expenses. So that 20 or 30% difference of after tax and pre-tax dollars that I can do something with to invest or build my portfolio in other reasons or other areas is a massive difference over the life of my income career or 10 or 20 years of investing. I can pre-tax dollar invest before any employee can and it's all completely legitimate and completely legal, okay? Number three, you pay too much in taxes. So these three things have something to do with each other. The governments and schools don't really educate you how to be an entrepreneur, um, you left school thinking you needed a job, and you pay too much in taxes. Remember what we said about um, you know, being a, an employee or being self-employed? You know, you're paying too much in tax if you're not legally sending your pre-tax dollars to legitimate investment vehicles. Remember, earn, then spend on legitimate expenses, including your investments, and then pay tax, rather than earn, pay tax, and then spend what's left. Massive difference over the life of your working career. Now, number four, and probably the most important thing, is you buy liabilities that you think are assets. Now, your house and your car are not assets. I'm sorry, but a real, true investor considers an asset as something that pays you every month on a positive nature for you to own it, okay? So if you go and see an accountant or a financial planner or your banker or the ATO, they'll all tell you that your house is an asset and your car is an asset. If those things cost a monthly expense, and even if they're owned free and clear, if those things don't make you money without you having to work for it, then they're considered liabilities, not assets. This is a major disruption to what people think an asset is and what people think a liability is. A true investor and a true entrepreneur believes that assets must pay you every month for owning them, okay? Massive difference into what your accountant will tell you. You think all debt is bad. Now, we have good debt and we have bad debt. Now, I have lots of good debt. So, there's a difference in Australia as well where good debt can be classed as investment debt as opposed to principal place of residence or credit card debt, which is bad debt. But a true investor or entrepreneur will also classify an investment debt, if it's negatively geared, as a bad debt. So you may, the tax office may call this a good debt, 
um, because it's tax deductible. But if that rental income does not cover that expense on that property, a true investor calls that a bad debt simply because it costs you every month to own it. Okay, so remember, we're going through the points here. You buy liabilities, you think are assets, you think that all debt is bad. Number six, you rely only on earned income and only one source of income. Okay, very important that you understand how to diversify your income streams. The average investor or the average multiple property owner and multimillionaire has seven streams of income. Now those streams of income might only be a couple hundred dollars a month to support their business or their job or, or whatever or their rental properties but having those other sources of income is very important to do because it gives you some leeway, gives you some you know um, freedom in the household from your time. Exchanging your time for money, if you have alter, alternate streams of income, it becomes less and less and less to, for you to be able to do that. You invest for capital growth instead of for cash flow. So you're buying that house because you think it's gone from 100,000 to 300,000 or you buy that share because it's going to go up. So a true investor will invest for monthly cash flow before like we're thinking about with all the debt and you buy these liabilities that you think are assets, it's all tied in, okay? So a true investor will look for monthly cash flow. That means that income or that asset creates a positive monthly income after all expenses for owning that asset. So a rental property that makes more money than it costs, or a business that makes more money than it costs, etc., etc., etc. So if that investor that invests for cash flow gets some capital growth, gets some depreciation, get some amortization, etc., they're all considered a bonus as well as the taxation benefits. But we invest, professional investors invest for monthly cash flow, not for capital growth. Because if you invest for capital growth, you may win sometimes, but eventually you're gambling and you're going to lose. So monthly cash flow is what professional investors invest for. You get advice from salespeople, seminar gurus, and people that have your best intention at heart, but haven't done what you want to do. So salespeople like um, your financial planner, or a stock market guy, or you know, like those sort of guys are salespeople. They make money from what in educating or giving you advice. Seminar gurus as well. They just happen to have some product at the back of the room that you so desperately need, or they have some of their other students that want to do a JV with you. Those are very dangerous things. I've seen, I've seen some seminar presenters and their assets and liability statements and most of them make their money through earned income selling you stuff rather than what they're telling you what they, what they do or what they're telling you what to do, okay? Very important that you have a think about where this advice is coming from. Is it from a financial planner that is selling you product, a stock market guy that's selling you product, or a seminar guru that's selling you a product, etc., etc. Very important that you understand that. You don't, you don't act with a team. A true investor and entrepreneur has a team of people. I have a team of about 12 or 13 people that I rely on, not just for, them, for their, um, their personal attributes, their mental attributes, but also their individual skills, such as a solicitor, an accountant, you know, a financial planner, all those guys. I make the final decision, and a true investor makes the final decision, but... I work with a team. Each person has their own specific job and role, okay? When people act alone, they are acting against the team and that team's always going to win, as in any sports and stuff like that, or business, okay? You don't have control of your money. So, there's a thing called entity, timing, and character. And in this article here, we go through a little bit further, uh, you know, in detail what's going on with that. We also go through other things like the price of gold and the printing of money. So feel free, please, download this report and discuss with your friends and family. Um, but you don't have control of your money. So you give your, you know, your estate or your assets or your investments over that to that financial planner. And he decides or manage fund and he decides or she decides where that goes. So when I invest, I like to control the entity, the timing and the character of the investment. So those three, there are other investor controls, but those three are the most important that I consider. So number 11 is you don't have your goals written down. I can't tell you how many seminars I've been to and they said, have you got, a, have you got your goals written down? No. 
if you had your goals written down and you look at them often, then it's surprising that you'll actually get them over time. And if you only get 80% of them, then that's great because at least you've achieved something in your life. So I know this is going to polarize people. Please feel free to leave a comment down underneath and uh, download the report. But this is why you're not rich. And when I mean rich, I mean free. Free from exchanging time for money. These 11 reasons are the reasons, main reasons why. Signing off now. This is Mitch, and I hope to see you at a seminar one day soon.